I understand if there are a lot of people that are mad at me about the stock market because I encourage them to stay in, especially if they have a lot of money. <clears throat> and I'm still encouraging them to stay in because at what point does the market become reasonable? Where are we? Are we in the 19s yet? 20, 2188. All right, so um, I guess that's not even the real question. The real question is what's up with the NASDAQ? Um, but really it's, all right. Five year, we're going real, 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 real strong. Two year, we're probably about pretty a little bit below the two year average on the Nasdaq. Okay, that's that's the scary part. But what's actually scary for a lot of people is the Russell because um, the Russell is what makes our world turn, and the Russell's looking pretty brutal right now. Um, so. I feel like a lot of companies are having a tough time. I feel like a lot of investors are having a tough time too because they're like, well, I left my money in my endowment fund and then next thing you know, um, it crashed that bad after you said that we should stay in through the crash. And what I'll tell you is the reason that you and people with a lot of money need to stay in through the crash is because um, you are defending our economy when you stay in through the crash because there are a lot of people that have been selling and obviously there's, there's, I mean, that's, it's, it's a really tough economy right now because some of, some of us are afraid that we're not going to be able to get stuff and that a lot of these companies are going to get shut down. But then some of us also are like, wow, I'm spending so much freaking money right now. Like, it's like, wow, we're all going into quarantine. Now we all have to spend $150 on bullets, which you had to work to find. And we have to spend, um, which you don't have to spend that. that that's the thing. I, I feel, I feel like I didn't have to, but the problem is I threw away my bullets last summer when I was in California. So I had to replace my bullets and let's face it. I, I would replace them more if I had my own money, but I do live near a military base and I do have confidence that the military has bullets. Um, and I do believe that everything's going to stay fine. Um, but for some reason, but it's weird how you, you find out you can't buy bullets and then you're suddenly like, wait, what? I can't buy bullets now. <laughs> and then, then suddenly it's like, I have to find them. And then, and th that, that's kind of what toilet paper was like, I think. And that's the thing about how we're kind of actually getting to the point that the stock, the, sh the shelves are going to look normal, but let's face it. If you're from a place that's getting hit with coronavirus really bad and you make tortillas, um, can there be a tortilla shortage? I saw that um, Mission Tortillas had a coronavirus case in a town where they manufacture tortillas, but it doesn't mean that they have them there. But I'm just saying like that's the sort of thing that can lead to people shutting down certain things, certain factories, and that could really affect the supply chain. And that's why a lot of us are wondering if we're going to have shortages of certain things that we like, which is realistic, but as long as we have food, it's, we're fine. And that's the thing, like we are fine. Um, it's just, we have to kind of hunker down and, um, Except there are, like, why, why did I buy bullets? Because there are crazy people right now. There are people that are like, I'm suicidal. This is blah, blah, blah. I'm crazy. I'm, this is the end of the world. I'm, I, I want to be, I want to die. Um, and I don't, or I don't care. Because some people react like that to danger. And who's like that? No, seriously. I'm, I have a, I have a serious problem with like, oh, danger? Where's my gun? <laughs> that's, that's, that's me. Um, but I feel like, that's not always a good behavior in a president, but, um, sometimes that is good behavior. Um, and that, that's what people are for. And that's what probably a female vice president's for. Um, it's for me, me who's saying, actually, I need 500 more bullets. I only have 500. And then it's like my mom who's like, eh, you don't need 500 more bullets. We're set, but you can get 50 more. <laughs> because we want to make sure that gun has bullets too. But it doesn't mean that you, I'm not, what I'm trying to say is, um, as long as our society sticks together and we go, okay, we're going to beat this together and we're going to accept that it's going to change things for a little while. And by the way, will I be a homeschool tutor 
Um, how much are you going to pay me? Seriously. Jobs like crazy, right? Homeschool tutors. Because I feel like a lot of people... This is this is a serious problem right now. I mean, um, it's almost like someone should have written an online education platform <laughs> using the government's money like I proposed in my presidential campaign and use that software and then uh, adapt it to um, classrooms that are like on the computer. But um, the great... And the great thing about my, my idea was that wasn't I talking about like games to, to learn math and, and, and vocabulary and, um, certain, um, and like, uh, to, 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 to teach kids how to read. I, I've talked about that a lot. Uh, I want to develop software to do that. That's what I wanted to do for a living. Um, before I, like I, w I, w I was trying to get into Stanford and then um, I was studying for the GRE because I was going to take it again because I could almost get into Stanford to study ed education technology. And then I snapped my Achilles tendon and then I didn't even apply. And so I, I, the reason I wanted to do that is because I wanted to, do, to develop online education platforms for, that teach kids how to read um, to supplement teachers because you could make classrooms smaller. And so um, if we had already developed this sort of thing – then it might be easier on the kids to do an online uh, classroom. But the problem is when you do an online classroom, it's like, hey, kids, sit alone in your house and your parents have to figure out what to do with you because they're supposed to be at work. And um, you need to be on your computer with your friends, but you're not with your friends because all that's on the computer is your teacher. I mean, it's just, it's boring. It's That's the thing, it's... Kids need to be kept engaged, and that's why the software that I've talked about, the government developing, should already be developed before right now. Um, I mean, and yeah, we can trust the private sector to do it, but like, if the public sector has that much money and we need to give people jobs, then why wouldn't we do software development that's um, free and fun? I understand you're competing with businesses, but businesses will exist no matter what. Um, and they can have their own software and the gaming industry is always going to be out there and educational games are always going to be out there. Um, but um, it doesn't mean that we can't um, put a map. That's the thing. Joe Biden hates game developers. Like he, he, he got into it. I don't know what he was like when he was running for president in Iowa. Um, he like started saying he doesn't like game developers. And it's like, well, we need game developers so that these kids that are doing homeschool right now um, can learn more, more efficiently because, um, you need to keep their attention. And that's, that's the real problem with online classrooms that are like teacher. Hey, I'm going to teach you grammar. Um, you're not with your friends and you're not, um, getting to go out and exercise and you're, um, you're not with your friends.